probe placement is probably one of the most important elements of using MeasureQuick. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So out in front of me here, I've got a couple of different things. I've got uh, three line temperature sensors, suction line, liquid line, discharge line, a couple of pressure sensors. I've got my return air uh, humidity sensors. I've got a Testo probe here I'm using for outdoor air, a couple of manometers and a redfish meter. And where you put these probes is absolutely critical to getting good uh, operation out of your system. So let's just start here with these temperature probes. You'll notice that on all of these, I always mark these liquid line, suction line, discharge line, DLT. And I have a mark so that basically easy identification. There is a serial number down here in the back that you can get to. This one is uh, 8200 and you use that when you're mapping them. But after you get them mapped, there's really no reason that you'd want to do that. So we go ahead and turn these three probes on here and we'll get those connected. So when we're coming in here on the liquid line, you want to be about six inches or so away or you know close to the service valve here. So I'll go ahead and connect the liquid line temperature here. Suction line, this is a heat pump system. The true suction's right here on top of the reversing valve here. But as long as I'm in the air conditioning mode, I can grab my suction line temperature, again, close to the service valve on there. These field piece clamps, they do beep when they're connected correctly. So if this is open, you get a yellow light and it's uh, telling you that it's not connected correctly. When it closes, it goes to green. Discharge line here, I wanna be at least six to eight inches away from the discharge line. So I'm gonna be right here. If your lines are dirty at all, you have to uh, do a little light sanding on these to get good connections. So I got my, my discharge line, suction line, liquid line hooked up. Now, I'm gonna take a couple of pressure probes here and I'm gonna show you a couple things here. This is the uh, AccuTools S10767. It's a, it's a valve core depressor. I use these a lot when I'm hooking up on my high side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my liquid line probe and I'm gonna just attach it to this depressor um, before I attach it to the system. And I'm gonna back this valve all the way out so that it's open. And then I'm gonna connect this up to the system here. And all this does for me is it allows me to very easily open this up. Now I can read pressure on this and then back it out when I take it off and I'm not gonna lose any charge. Now, personally, what I do a lot of times is to add refrigerant to the system. If I don't have a lot of access, I'll just put a core tool on here like this. We'll get this connected here. Let me back this core out. And what I do, put the core tool on so I got this snug. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just take the core out. So I'll put this in here, hold your finger in the back, back this out till you feel a couple clicks. And we'll get that all the way out. I think I've got it here. So I'll back that out, valve this off, and I'll pull this out here. And you can see I got my Schrader core there. I usually keep some extras with me. And then I'll connect the side port here of my core tool with my gauge on my low pressure side. And the reason I do this is if I want to add gas in to the low side, now I've got a port here. I can open up this ball valve, let refrigerant in. So as I charge the system up, it just makes it easier. And I can always measure pressure right here. So I've got a place now to add refrigerant in. And then when I'm done, I can just put the core back in and I'm good to go. So now I've got all those probes hooked up and ready. The next thing we want to do here is supply air probe. Now, my supply air probe, I can do two things here. If, if I got a register, I can just sort of open this register up with just a tiny bit here and slip the probe in between there and get it inside the register. And what I want to do though, is I want to get into the airstream as far in as I can. I don't want to be right on top of the air handler or right on top of the coil down here. I want to give that be in the air where it's had enough time to go through the blower, mix well, and I get a good return air temp. Now on the, on the return side here, and I have the camera person come over here for a minute. On the return, if you have a single filter grill, you can just tie into the filter grill like this, just on the front face of the filter grill. That's the ideal place for the return air probe. It's nice and in the return air stream. Return air is gonna come in like this and that's, that's all fine and, uh, and that'll work just fine. Now, if you have a, a ducted return, then obviously what I do is drill a hole in the duct or even this wireless probe, just take the bottom door off and slide it in here. But uh, either way, I wanna be sampling close to the furnace for the return air because I wanna make sure that I'm seeing what the, what the evaporator coil is gonna see when it goes in here. 
Now one note on this supply air probe up here. You, you don't want to ever take and put these on the face of the register. So if I put this like this, what happens is as the air is blowing off this, right, it's coming out at an angle, I'm pulling in fresh air behind it. It's called air entrainment. So I get a really weird reading here that's not reflective of the true temperature of the duct work if I'm not setting up that correctly. So again, always inside the duct so we get in the, in the airstream, really important on the supply. Now the only other two probes I've got here, or three I guess, I've got some static pressure probes and I've got one for the return, one for the supply. Static pressure probes, I want to put the probe in and I want to face the probe, this probe here, towards the, towards the, the airstream. So this is going to go in like this. So I'm going to face this in, put it in, and, I'll, and now I have one for the supply static. I could use a single manometer and just took up two tubes, but I like using supply and return independently so I can see what each static pressure is. I got the return one on. I'm going to do the same thing here. Get this in, turn it, and tie it into the, into the duct. Last one here is outdoor air probe. You want to put the outdoor air probe in. You want to get in the airstream of the condenser where the air is coming in here. This one's magnetic here, so I can get a, a good uh, sampling of the air outside of the line of sight of the sun so we're not seeing any sun. Now, over here, I'm gonna tie in, I've got everything tied in, so we're gonna go ahead and, and turn on our probes in our, uh, in our app here. And if we look at our probe manager, what you're gonna see is, uh, just at a quick glance, I got 129 for the low side, 303 for the high side, so I got my high and low, low correct. 53 degrees in the suction line, 79 degrees in the liquid line, 139 in the discharge, all that makes sense. Suppliers, 56. Return air 73, that makes sense. So those are good. On the smart tools here, I got one map return at uh, 0.13 inches of static, supply at 0.24 inches of static, and outdoor air temperature at 73 degrees. So all the probe mappings here make sense. And if I go back here, and I just have a, uh, an interesting design airflow in there, I guess I, I'm in a project, let me exit it. I, I didn't realize this was in one, I've been home again. So now you can see you got my targets in there. I'm ready to profile the system and then take off with measure quick and go. So probe placement, if you, if you don't put the probes in the right place, garbage in, it's garbage out, you're just gonna have problems. If you just follow these couple simple steps, it's gonna work really well for you and it'll make measure quick really easy to use. This is Jim with measure quick. Thanks a lot for watching.